If you guys missed the last episode, don't worry. The one thing that you did miss, which is a pretty big thing, I wanna make this challenge even more serious. If I don't turn what's left of my bankroll into $10,000, it's over. I'm quitting poker. Now let's take the last $700 to my name in Pokerland, I suppose, into the Gardens Casino. One shot, one opportunity. Would you just capture it, let it slip? <laughs> By this point, you've probably realized that I've got more writing on this challenge than I honestly anticipated up front, but I'm going to make the most of it. I've took myself about an hour south to the Gardens Casino from where I live. The game here is supposed to be really good, and I'm excited when I finally get seated into the 5-5 game. We're into this game for $600. i have got only $100 to reload if I needed it. And we're gonna probably need it because, you know, we're pretty crazy. In this very first hand of note, I look down at Ace King. I raise it to 15 and three people make the call. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty hard to win Ace King four ways in a pot like this. And it's even more difficult when the flop comes out 10 high. I do have a saving grace here as I do have the backdoor nut flush draw and two overcards for that matter. I decide to see bed here, which is a little speculative to 50 bucks. In real time, I'm just thinking like, hey, I could have aces, I could have kings, and you know, I can even represent a flush if somehow the club comes. The person on my left says, absolutely fuck you, slaps me across the face and puts out $100. The button thinks about it for a very long time before deciding to make the call. With the action back over to me, now with the amount of money that's in the middle, it's kind of gross. Don't even have an opportunity to fold here as probably any ace or any king is good here. And any club gives me an opportunity to maybe bluff, so... We flick in the 50 more dollars to call, we're getting like a thousand to one. And when the turn card comes out the jack of spades, okay, now we're talking. We now pick up a gutter ball to go along with the opportunity of bluffing if a club were to come. So when the action checks over to the button, he thinks about it for quite some time before eventually deciding to bet 105. At this point, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that there's quite a bit of money in the middle. That's about a quarter size pot bet. I don't love it, it's not great to be calling out of position with gutter ball draws, but in my mind, I feel like if a club comes, I can probably bluff both opponents off of it as it's very unlikely for three people to be going for flush draws, as well as the simple fact that any king, ace, or queen I'd imagine give me the best hand. I decide to make a little bit of a speculative call with at least good intention, and so does the other player. The river card comes with three of diamonds, so all of that was for naught. We don't improve and somehow it ends up checking through and jack seven of clubs wins. All right, my club bluff wouldn't have worked. All right, so no biggie. We're only down about 200 bucks to get things going. We top off for the last hundred dollars we have to our name and our stack is sitting around 600 bucks. Yeah, not great. In this next hand, there are a couple of limps and we look down at ace three of hearts. I decide to isolate this to $35 and two of the limpers call. The flop comes out giving me bottom pair with the backdoor flush draw. And when the action checks over to me, I throw out a continuation bet. And for lucky for me, both opponents end up making the fold. It seems small, but in rel relative to my entire net worth of this bankroll challenge, it's a big deal. That increases my bankroll 10% just for taking that down. So after winning a couple of really small pots over the next hour and 15-ish minutes, like the last 10, $20 here, $5 here, $10 there, we've now managed to get ourselves a little over our buy-in of $700. That's kind of good news, I think, and even more so in this next hand where early position limps and I look down at ace-queen offsuit and I decide to isolate the 20. I don't know why ace-queen gets such bad rep here. I feel like it's a really solid hand. Outside of aces and like ace-king, we're never doing that bad. But a little bit of scary stuff happens here when the OMC to my left decides to 3-bet to $60. With the opponent to my right, limp calling 60 feels like, you know, with this price, there's no way I'm going to fold. And even less of a chance when we flop top pair on a very wet board texture. The action checks over to the initial raiser who decides to bet for $75 after thinking about it for a second. The opponent to my right ends up flat calling and once again we're faced with a decision. I end up going all in for $475. The OMC decides to call fairly quickly and the other opponent ends up folding king queen face up. 
Obviously, when we get called, we're not loving it, especially not from this gentleman to my left. At least he was a gentleman about everything. The run out leaves us with only top pair, and I say that I have a queen. Uh, my OMC friend here says that is no good and shows pocket aces. Correct. My hand is supremely not good. Nice hand to you, sir. We end up losing that, and unfortunately, our stack gets dwindled down to $225. To be quite honest, it seems like it's been a recurring theme in this series. I haven't been able to pick up any momentum. Every time something good has happened to me, immediately something twice as bad happens. Every time I take a step forward, I take two steps back. Like anything in life, you just got to pick your ass up and not moping and doping about it. So there's no one that's going to be playing these cards for me other than myself. So let's strap myself in. And let's get it together. Feels like there was some bad juju on that last table, so I end up making a table change after winning a couple of small pots to get me sitting around $300 in front of me. Without even being able to grab my camera and get ready for this next hand, a lot of shit goes down. Early position raises to 20, and the action player in the late position decides to make the call. I'm in the big blind with pocket sevens, and I think about my options for a little while. I decide the best course of action is just to call here and allow my opponents, especially this action player, to stay in the hand, so... We're going to a flop where it seems like my relative Zen mentality as of the last 15 minutes is going to get paid off. We make bottom set on an unbelievably wet board texture. The action checks to that late position action player who decides to bet for 50. With the action on me against a player type like this, there's no reason in my opinion to slow play. I immediately want to get the money in the middle. So I make a raise to 150, leaving myself about $100, 150 behind. With the action getting back over to the action player, he decides to go all in, man. That's music to my freaking ears. We have about 305 total. I obviously made the call immediately. This pot is ballooned up to nearly $700. Our opponent is probably in bad shape with whatever the hell he has. And when the turn card comes out, the queen of diamonds, we feel fairly great as we now have a boat. I mentioned that I have a boat immediately. The river card is not really relevant. Our opponent shows a queen and we end up scooping a much needed pot against our opponent here. Let's go. The one thing that I just can never get over is the limping at these lower stakes. The button decides to limp for $5 and then the small blind decides to isolate the 35. I'm in the big blind and I'm no better than the button. I just flat call here with ace deuce of diamonds. To be quite fair, I am in position, but in a hand like this, I think it's just so obvious that I should be re-raising, but once again, because I have literally my bankroll for this challenge on the table, I'm kind of handcuffed. The button comes along as well. We're going three ways to $100 in this pot already, and the flop does not help us at all. Queen Jack with the Queen Jack of Clubs and then the Five of Diamonds. We do have a couple of backdoor possibilities, and when the action checks through and we see the Eight of Diamonds on the turn, this is full-blown green light. I'm praying that my opponent to my right does not continuation bet for a little delay action, but instead he checks, which we love. This gives me the green light to go absolutely berserk. I'm going to bomb the hell out of this turn card. I make it $75 to go. Luckily for me, both opponents won't be putting me through the ringer as they end up making the fold. Good for me. We needed that one really, really badly. We end up leaving this on a high note. Although we weren't able to muster anything magical, we do have some more to talk about in the post-session interview. So I'm doing something that I've almost never done, which is I'm just kind of calling it there. We ended up running up the stack to about $680. And yeah, I think that was a short session and just felt gassed out, if I'm being honest. Been a long day and I felt like the responsible thing was to go home. $680 means I booked a $20 loss and the losing streak continues. But in all honesty, considering we were down to 225 at one point, it feels like a win. That and more importantly, I'm a man of my word, so I'm not gonna go back on it. I gotta treat the 680 like it's the last 680 on planet Earth for me. So we're gonna run it up, just not tonight. I promise you, I'm gonna make a comeback. And it's gonna be so sick when we all look back at this video. I promise. Yeah. It'll turn you to a dog like a cheetah. Yeah. And expose with cat like a cheetah. They smoke my partner like reef. They me lo porque o no and you know me can they must really need Jesus. He said real blood, I never seen a crypt and my eyes closed. 